might not be. Well, welcome everybody to Perk Up Thursday, and this is a special um, Perk Up today because we are celebrating our 15 year anniversary all month this month. And today we have a panel of current Focus Feeds businesses. And what we're going to do is I'm going to introduce you. I'm going to share when they joined the Focus Suites, and then we're going to start with Jeff here, and um, you're going to tell us about our, your business, what led you to the Focus Suites, or what decision made you want to be here, and then just share about your experience here in starting a business in this type of environment. So um, we're going to start with Andrew Carlson with Home Care Partners because he. Um, is the most senior of our panel today. Ben, you're the longest. Ben, you're the longest. Ben, you're the longest. So you want me to answer those questions? <laughs> uh, so Carla and I own Home Care Partners, uh, been in business five years, um, have known each other for over 20 years, and really are dedicated to senior care. So when we're talking about what is some different things that need to be done to elevate the quality of senior care um, is how we started the conversation of home care partners and uh, we were working out of my basement office for a while like a very common entrepreneurship story very small uh, two desks that we had and it was great to come into the suites and be able to expand and talk more about that as we go along. And Andrew and Carla joined the suites in September of 2018. Um, Jeff Heifel is our next senior member and he joined in June of 2019. That's crazy to think <laughs> Yes, right before COVID. Right before COVID. So my name is Jeff Keipel. I have Kelby Security. It's a cybersecurity consulting company specializing in small and medium businesses. Um, I guess I came to the focus suites just, I, I felt pretty comfortable with business, but it's the other stuff. It's the things you don't really know and the support. And I tend to be an introvert. I don't like networking. I knew I needed to be around people and do that. And so that's probably been the biggest help and the refocus because I think sometimes, especially as entrepreneurs, we get pretty uh, confident in what we want to do. That doesn't necessarily mean that's the right thing to do. So it's good to have some accountability and kind of change those things. And so, yeah, it's been a great experience. Rhea is our next senior <laughs> member. Really? Yes. <laughs> uh, Rhea and her partner, Josh Nix, uh, joined the suites in June of 2021. Wow, it's been that long. Um, hi, Rhea Barfield. Um, I work with Good Life Funding. Um, partner Josh Nix, he's not here right now. Um, we specialize in partnering with local real, uh, investors and partner them up with individuals who are interested in stepping into the real estate market. Um, it's usually by, we provide 100% financing for a home. Um, they <coughs> fix it, flip it, sell it, we're an interest only, so they get, you know, um, they pay us back what they borrowed, plus the, you know, the monthly interest that accrues, um, and then they get 100% off the profit. So um, it's something that we are very passionate about. Um, it's, it's amazing to, to see to see these individuals who thought they couldn't go anywhere with real estate, um, having a great opportunity and making fifty to seventy thousand dollars on profit on a home that you know wasn't worth that much to begin with. Um, so yeah, that's that's what we focus on. Um, what brought us here to focus with? You know, I I don't really know exactly what pinpointed Josh to to find um, this space. However, when him and I were to discussing moving in we realized that there were so many opportunities for us to be able to grow as a better business. Um, the programs that are offered, the support that's offered, the individuals that are here that provide, you know, face-to-face -face, um, every day. And like him, um, we know that we needed to network a little better and things like that. So being around all these individuals is, is the best way to go about it. I think that's it. Uh, so our next two panelists just joined us very, very recently. Uh, Philip Andrew with Fiscal Dad Coaching joined us in August 2022. Yeah, so I have uh, <clears throat> a commercial cleaning business, Andrew Cleaning Service, uh, which is how I kind of became affiliated with the Entrepreneurship Center. This was back in kind of 13, 14. 
I had been doing commercial cleaning work as a subcontractor, contractor, employee as well. Wanted to kind of formally form my own company and expand. So I live about a mile away. It was very convenient. I took some classes I, through SCORE. Nebraska Business Developmental Center was over here doing some classes. The Entrepreneurship Center, uh, which were very helpful in me kind of building the foundation and the knowledge of, you know, just even simple things that we think of, you know, what's the difference between an independent contractor and an employee, you know, if, when you're hiring people, workers comp, all those types of things, basic business accounting, you know, all those basics, I kind of, I, and they were very valuable. Went on to kind of run my cleaning business and then uh, earlier this year really started to put some focus on, uh, like Jody said, we went through kind of the same uh, personal finance coaching training and really wanted to put some energy into that. So in January, I saw that you were doing a book club here. So that was my kind of re-entry into this place. Started kind of growing back into relationships, found out about an office space and just felt it was kind of the next transition to, to you know, building that business. So just kind of in a transition phase a little bit, still running the cleaning business while growing the, the kind of coaching and financial literacy teaching. And Stacy is our newest focus suite member. Stacy Dam and her husband um, have Dam Integration and Technology. And Stacy also has her own. So they have a uh, suite here, and then Stacy has her own suite. Six and read from the doorway. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I'm Stacy Dam, Dam Integration and Technology. My husband's business has been around for about 10 years, um, and he went full time five years ago and um, he outgrew our basement space. So we got a big order this last year and it took over our entire basement and he needed extra help with the operations side. And so I took on the operations pieces for him so he could focus on his automated test and measurement data acquisition piece. And I took over the rest of it so he could continue to grow his business. And so the focus suites um, made sense for us to A, reclaim our basement space um, and then also starting my own business. Um, I love the operations side, but most more specifically CRM. So if you're thinking about how you want to better manage your leads, ticketing systems, if you have people logging into multiple shared inboxes and you want to make sure that follow up is good for your customers, that's what I'm really passionate about is um, good data in and out. Um, the double loop ideas, inbound, outbound communication. So however, however you're communicating with your customers, what I really um, like to talk about so that small and medium sized businesses can get back to the work that you actually want to do and let a system be set up for you running in the background so um, so that you can do what you love. So um, with us both now being this, um, small business owners and um, the Focus Suites has given us the freedom of having our home back and being able to report to an office um, space here. We were at another co-working space downtown and they were not able to fulfill our needs to continue to grow and we saw so many growth opportunities here. The networking experiences, the community that's built here, um, we're just really thankful for in just the very short time that we're here and we're very much looking forward to being able to be here and be set up and know that we're settled in and continue to grow our businesses and we really felt that we could do that here. Well, I would like, um, and I said we'd start with Jeff, but we don't have to. Whoever wants to chime in, um, maybe share with us all what it's been like to build a business in a community setting like this. So it's, I think the first thing that comes out is how much easier it is because A, you have support and I think you tend to go down rabbit holes and research and try to figure out how to do stuff. And it's so much better to just ask somebody that's been there and done that and has like, it may not be the best or whatever, but it's been at least verified and you know that it works. That's been huge. And then uh, with you, I think the biggest revelation for me probably changed my way of thinking is when we did those canvases and we talked and stressed that it wasn't really as much about what you thought as much as making sure you hit the price, the pain points and really kind of catered to what they needed. And so that kind of changed my thinking, which really helped. And I think just kind of accountability, support and getting to know people. You don't even know stuff 
and then all of a sudden you meet somebody that's around and then that kind of leads to another thing and so like just the connections that there's no way i would have had all the connections that i do now without being here um i think of the saying entrepreneurship is self-development disguised as a business and it feels like you're facing an avalanche when you're growing a company that has to scale large um, because you've got multiple different things that you need you need the community to be learning i mean you're trying to stay above what's coming at you and that constantly happens as you grow more is required of you you have to be able to run bigger finances you uh, hire managers that are doing things that you used to do and you're trying to help coach them and to just keep everything together is extremely difficult and uh, it's helpful to have the support that we did here because uh, having so many entrepreneurs come in you're able to see where they're at at their different stage right what type of advice is helpful what do they need sometimes it's just a pat on the rear to uh, say you know get back out there and have that energy to do what you need to do and here's some connections to other resources that are going to help you think that with the right um, community entrepreneurship is not as scary as it can be uh, so very thankful for that that's how it's helped us you have to have a place to start i feel like and for me with my business being so new um, I need to know what else is out there, what others are doing and how we can work together. I think being in a creative space where, oh, you're doing this and you're trying these things. Oh, okay, how can we work together? And just some of those conversations have been really rewarding for me as I'm thinking about the scope of my business of what I really love to do and want to do and what I'm okay saying, I don't do that, but here's somebody who does. Um, I wouldn't be able to do that in my basement. So um, having a space to be able to do that, I think is important. So that's what's been good for us is to get out and meet others running small to medium sized businesses, getting out of our, our comfort zone, our regular groups that we know what's out there and find out what else, what else is here. I think there's been a couple things that have been positive for me uh, going through, like uh, you talked about the, that Canvas business model it's a different way of looking at kind of how to grow your business, how to structure your business. With my cleaning business, I, I did it as kind of a, the traditional kind of boilerplate business model. And so sitting down and really challenging myself to think of a different way to do things has really helped. The Clifton Strengths uh, coaching gave me a, kind of a good idea of the strengths that I need to accentuate and really play to those strengths. So I, I actually, with that, have adjusted a little bit of how I'm communicating with people and networking with people. Uh, and it's just the, the camaraderie in book club. You know, we it's we have good conversations. Sometimes it's not really appropriate to the book we're reading. But, you know, <laughs> we get off into tangents, but it's just kind of nice having uh, people to bounce ideas off of. A lot of people here have been in a lot of different businesses they've done a lot of different things so it's just kind of nice to you know hear different viewpoints of, of what other people are doing what's worked what didn't work those type of things one part that i thoroughly enjoyed and appreciated when stepping into the focus suites was the financial aspect of it um, for entrepreneurs sometimes it's hard to go from working in your basement and you know just being with yourself in your home where things are financially secure to finding an office, that's a big financial responsibility. I mean, you rent an office space for $1,000 a month, you're trying to start your business, so $1,000 a month is, is hard to kind of kick over sometimes, especially when you're doing it on your own. Um, so the focus suites, I was blown away by the fact that they're like, hey, we're gonna charge this little amount and provide all these resources for you to be successful. Um, so that was a huge kicker to me. Um, my partner Josh has been you know, an entrepreneur for 25 years. Um, I'm new to it. Um, I was a W-2, nine to five, in an office, clock in, clock out, here's your hour lunch, to this, to where it's, I have my own freedom, I have my own abilities to do different things as I see fit. Um, but being in the focus suites, I've been able to meet so many different types of people through, I mean, many different facets of you know, their career choices um, and create bonds and connections and the ability to explore um, different ideas 
ideas that I don't think I would have been able to come up with if I was just sitting at home downstairs in my basement with my desk in my window. Like I couldn't be able, you know, I wouldn't be able to do that. So um, that's that's the that's the biggest thing for me is the fact that yeah, all the opportunities here, the connections, the financial part, um, and it's nice. It's nice to be able to walk out, you know, walk out of my door and know that not everyone is in real estate. Like, I had no idea thoroughly what you guys did. And now I'm gonna talk to you after this and be like, hey, I need your help. Um, I didn't know what you did, you know? So there's so many different connections and support and opportunity. There's just so much opportunity here. And the staff, the, the management staff is just incredible. Like, I've had support from you, the smiles, a hi, good morning, it, absolutely everything. So all in all, it's just been, I'm very, very grateful for the opportunity that was given to Josh and I to be able to be a part of such a successful environment. Can I add to that too? The alumni network is something too that is is pretty amazing. That's just from the, yeah, the few, the few um, months that I've been here, just going to other events. Oh yeah, I was at Focus Weeks too. Let's talk. And so having the connection to those who have come before all of us is pretty neat too. Just having that commonality and a, a starting point to reach out to others saying, hey, I'm in the focus weeks right now, you're a successful, you know, graduate and, and let's talk has been has been amazing just the first couple of months. Yeah. And it's great that networking is highly encouraged. I mean, we have a, a wall over there full of all of our business cards and it's so great to walk out and be like, hey, do you have an event coming up? Hey, do you have an event coming up? Oh, I wanna come, do you wanna come to my, so it's like it's, everyone is just working together to be the best person that they can be, so. I think so on that note like when I first started having Andrew and Carla and Mary Ann was so inspiring to watch them and grow and like when you get frustrated with something and see like how the progress goes and inspiring to see people succeed and what they want to do that's uh that's pretty nice well, most people don't understand. Um, very difficult if you have friends that do not own businesses and family members that do not own businesses on your difficult days to have anybody that understands that. Uh, so, I mean, that's a great benefit to be around others in that too. Because, uh, you know, if you're working through something hard and you're uh, trying to solve a problem that's difficult or just get some support, you can't go to somebody that doesn't understand it kind of segues into um, what I'm curious about from you two specifically next because um, you two are approaching towards the end of your time here and you now will become alumni members here in um, the next month to six months to a year. Um, what's that feel like looking back when you started and you looked up to these more senior members and now you're the senior members? Well, it's quick, and I think <laughs> it's amazing how fast that time goes. And then it's 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 probably this way for every business owner that you learn so much, and you also learn how much you have no idea about anything. And so that that's been exciting. But I think just uh, the sense of confidence for me in knowing when I don't know things, where to go to figure it out. I think that's been probably the biggest. Take away. Um, it's great to scale here and to be able to have proof of concept and grow in the sizes that we needed instead of you know, common in our industry is purchasing a franchise. Franchise requires uh, an expensive storefront, um, so our investment uh, was able to be a lot more manageable in starting the business. and. Um, to point after five years has been really great and as we are getting into the next level of our business more like the alumni right you're trying to say what are the groups that we need to continue to build and network with that are going to help us learn to get to the next levels um, that's where phase we're in Andrew can you share a little bit about um, the process of trying to rent a space or decide to uh, buy a space post Focus Suites and how that look, what that looked like moving from Focus Suites into a permanent spot. The markets have changed a lot in the last year. So when we were looking at spaces to lease, it was pretty reasonable about a year ago. Um, so we're moving a whole office team into a different location. So we need to decent size 
Um, but then as interest rates were changing and pricing was changing and construction was changing, leasing a new building, just leasing any building became very expensive. So spaces we were looking at were a little over 60,000 a year for the lease. And so when we were looking at that and we said, if we are going to invest 60,000 a year into a lease, um, let's try to take a big swing and uh, make this investment, created a second company um, for investments for purchasing that property. Um, but it was just the, the timing of how expensive that lease became to purchase. Um, what types of things were you looking for in a new space that were um, in comparison to what you have here? Um, thing that comes off that probably first is like our offices are really great that they have nice windows and sunlight <laughs> many places when you are leasing or you know you're moving you're in a, a tunnel and so we looked at a lot of those and Carla got to make the pick because she said this feels the most like where we're at now we care a lot about our team and she's like we got to have these so got a area that everybody gets an office window to match a little bit so it doesn't feel like a downgrade. Be a big part of it, I'd say. Can I ask a question? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, now, you're like the third person that within the last couple of weeks that have said you have graduated from here to buying your own building and leasing it out. Do you have statistics on that, Brooke, as to how many, I mean, offhand, how many of the businesses have grown so much that they purchased their home and are renting their home? Um, off the top of my head, there's four, five, five. Okay, so that's a huge um, to you guys for the fact that you helped them grow to this point that they're able to help others and rent, you know, buy buildings and rent out to other entrepreneurs. That's huge. It would have been a lot more difficult starting with that $60,000 a year lease to um, grow, right? We would have had to take on more debt. We would have had debt that we would be repaying for a long time and when you're not making much for the first several years of your business um, it takes a long time to get ahead of that um, some feedback that we've had from past alumni members has been that the sticker shock of going from the focus suites into commercial leases and um, we've toyed with that over the years um, for those of you who don't know rent um, starts at a rate in year one and it gradually increases um, each year that you're here but even at our highest rental rates it's still much lower than your commercial leases so um how does that sticker shock feel for you well we had enough time to prepare for that so you know understand it very appreciative for what um have spoken to several different people in the community that are passionate about entrepreneurship you know in our early days and where we're at now to help remove the barriers to starting a business um, it's very important but i think there is it's easy to overcome those things when someone's searching for the right space the right mentors the things that you need to do so i think we were involved in a lot of that and you know started the business eyes open to um, what those expenses were going to be down the road. That's why I appreciate the stepping up. You have a three year ish timeline to really think about it and plan ahead instead of, oh, one year, you got to get out of here. See you later. <laughs> you need more time um, while you're trying to get your business going. There's just a lot in those first few years um, that you need the time to focus on instead of where am I going to be and having to constantly chase that. And so I, I like the step up model here is nice. Anybody else have questions for our panel? What, what does your husband's business do in systems integration? Yeah, so he does automated test and measurement. So if for people who have some kind of device that they want to get to market um, in order to make sure it's optimally functioning on the line, he, he gets the data from those devices um, in order to Get them to market faster so an example would be he has a customer that they were using two people and it would take them 15 minutes to test one device because it was a very manual process he took that down to one person in two minutes 
because he was able to create a testing device and a dashboard for them to run their devices through faster. Um, so that's a piece of it. And then he also has a cloud-based um, data tool that he is in process of creating. So it's a, a big data pool um, that people can put data from multiple sources into and then eventually be able to visualize their data too. So a software as a service model. Um, so as you are watching, well, not just watching, going through the process of a startup mm -hmm. with your husband, mm -hmm. um, and then you still were like, yep, I want to do that now too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's kind of interesting. Um, uh, long story short, I was in a bike accident last year and, um, and I was laid up. I was in higher ed and, and working through the higher ed, um, ladder and um, working, we were working completely separately. We didn't see each other much, didn't see the family much. And after my accident, I said, well, wait a second, I, we can't just go back to how things were. What do I really love about my job that I'm doing now? And how can I make that my own thing so we can see each other more, so we can have the family and the work balance. It's just, that's a bad, you know, term. It's, um, but so we can kind of take more control of what our future looks like. And so that's how I got into it. It was kind of, a, it was definitely an awakening of um, what, the, what do you want the next 20 years to look like? And I felt like I was the tether for my family of being the nine to five. And um, this has given us the freedom. We're an RV family. And so we have satellite that we can do our businesses from wherever we want to, and then also be here. Um, as well for the community and so that's why um, that's how I kind of got my business started was what do I really love about the job that I'm doing how can I help other people and when I started helping him um, I realized just how much of a passion that it was and we were willing to take the risk for the freedom and excitement and just the creativity I've, since since starting my own business I've thought of a million other random things that I would like to do. I, I feel like I've, I never thought 10 years ago that I would be an entrepreneur, that I'd be sitting here, um, that I would be thinking about three other businesses that I want to start um, in the meantime. But it's seeing successful businesses like his and saying, yeah, we can do this. We can figure it out um, and have that, that lifestyle change was a, was a big wake-up call for us. And we're just really happy that we did because it – it's not easy, but it's it's so worth it, and that's why I I have a big um, big piece of my heart. I want to help um, women and families who just, you're just afraid to take that leap because you are that constant. You're the paycheck that's solid every single month. There there are ways to do that, and I think being in this kind of environment, um, learning from the people that are doing that well and figuring out how to have creative strategies to still take care of your family and, and pursue something that you love that's a little scary as possible. And and so I, I just encourage anyone who's thinking about that and afraid of of what that leap will look like is just to reach out to, to anyone here um, about that, the step that they took to do that because it's, it's worth it. Yeah. This question's for all of you. I'm curious. Um, uh, so here, of course, we support any business any of you want to start because that's what we just want you to test out your ideas and your passions, right? But what does support look like at home with your friends or your family? Do you have um, people in your life that get it, um, or is there um, are the people in your life you know more than nine to five and the stability and not the risk takers? Definitely answer that first. <laughs> uh, my better half um, has was working at legacy homes. You know, fourteen to sixteen hour days. It was, it was really really difficult. I was working you know ten to twelve hour days where we never saw each other. Like you guys, never saw each other. Um, so he decided to go out on his own. So he has his own construction company. Um, so we both now have the flexibility and understanding that. 
we can see each other, but sometimes it'll be like it used to be where we're not going to be able to see each other. Um, so it's really nice being able to go home and vent about the day or talk about a custom, well, not like that, <laughs> discuss the activities that occurred with a certain customer or whatever the case may be. I mean, really understand the frustrations of being an entrepreneur um, and understanding that you, you can only take in what you put out. Um, so, I mean, there have been multiple days where I've come home and I'm like, screw it, I am done, I'm over with, I'm just going to be a stay-at-home bum. And, you know, and he reminds me like, no, <laughs> number one, no. Um, and he's just like, you did this for a reason. You branched out on your own for a reason. You are passionate about what you are doing for a certain reason. Um, and vice versa, you know, he's come home struggling. Um, works with LP, he has many contracts with like LPS and they are very demanding. You have to be on point for everything. So there'll be days where he's home for an hour and at 10 o'clock at night he's fixing something else. So it's like the encouragement and understanding of what it takes to be an entrepreneur is definitely there. And um, I have two kiddos, an 18 year old and 13 year old. And I see the appreciation that they have when it comes to me being able to be home. I coach my daughter's soccer team. Um, I help coach her volleyball team. I, you know, I am at every single game, every single practice, bless you, every single game, every single practice, um, and, and it shows, she, it shows her appreciation is absolutely there. My son, I'm able to go to the high school and pick him up for lunch and we go have lunch and I can drop him back off, you know? Um, so they are definitely encouraging and supportive of Matt and I going out and doing these types of things because they see how happy it makes the household. And if there's not a happy household, then it's, it's hell, you know, it's not fun in any way, shape, or form. So um, having a partner who also took the leap is encouraging being a partner that also took the leap. So, yeah. Yeah, I would say one of the benefits of owning your own business is that you control your time and the values of the, of the business. Um, and it takes a while to get to the point where you can say no to extra revenue. <laughs> it's hard to say no at some points where you're at. But if, you know, especially with my cleaning business, I've gotten to the point where if something doesn't feel right about somebody who wants a bid from me or it doesn't work out with my time schedule, no, nope, sorry, I just, you know, I can't do it. Um, I think also in agreement with you, the, the cooperation with Ann, my wife, is even though I'm the owner of the business, she's 100% owner as well. And she has 100% veto power, <laughs> as, as I do, as I do, you know. Um, when, before I signed the lease to come in here, she came and visited and met the people here and she looked over the lease because she's in property management. So it would be dumb for me not to involve her and see if they stuck in anything on the lease. You know, that's gonna, that's gonna stick legal, us when we leave. Yeah, yeah. Stick things in. We like to do that. Yeah. I didn't think you were, but you never know. Uh, so yeah, any any time there's a, there's a time commitment that maybe is out of the ordinary, she has 100% veto power. She can say, oh no, we have this going on. Okay, well, I'll, maybe I'll try something different. Or maybe I get a, 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 a cleaning contract bid, you know, and they say, well, we want you to do it at this time. Uh, I can't do that at that time because we do other things. So I, that's one thing that I like about being an entrepreneur is that if you put in the work, you do get to the point where you get that. <laughs> You get that control, especially over the values as well. You know, you've, I've worked for some companies that are all about selling the client, not serving the client. You know, where it's, you know, if you don't, if you have to get no three times from somebody, you no, know, if they tell me no, I'm good. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll move on. But, so they, uh, those are some of the benefits that I think. But it does take a lot of communication and cooperation. I can second what you said about the happy family and um, my kids are different. They We have different conversations because now mom owns a business and dad owns a business. And so they're thinking about what kind of businesses could they own or maybe they want to work with mom and dad someday. And that's just something that was one of those extra, but I never even thought about 
that my eight-year-old is he's already thinking about what he wants to do because he has parents that he can look up to that are willing to do that so his creative mind is already running um, and so I, that's really neat to to start that already in our family and so we're really thankful for that I was nervous going out on my own because my parents are first-generation college students and they worked really hard um, and they they um, they worked, you know, the, the typical job, and then my mom built her own business though five years ago, and so it's like, how are they gonna feel? You know, is that scary for them? And they've been really supportive, and um, I just think it's so important if you think that somebody's gonna feel a certain way about um, what you're going at, it's likely not gonna be that way. You, you probably will have a lot of support out there to just go do it. Um, get out there and, and try it and moonlight for a while before you want to jump if that's what you're more comfortable with But I think the important thing is you don't know how it's going to go unless you actually try um, So just get in there you get more clarity when you're in it instead of yeah. instead of out of it Just thinking wishing you're not going to have a hundred ten percent done business plan um, When you launch it's it's going to be It's going to be muddy and um, but you will find support that supports out there You are uh, I guess I would give a very different perspective of this. <laughs> uh, and it, I think this is something to consider when you're determining the business that you want to run. Um, I think probably spouses of entrepreneurs don't know what they're getting into, and we don't know what we're getting into. I would guess the separation rate of uh, entrepreneurs that scale business is greater than the average. Um, you know, uh, we've run, our employees are working 24 hours a day, and they have been for years. And as we've grown in our managers, um, we don't have the flexibility, right? Our lives are not uh, able to go do whatever we want all the time. We have a little bit of that. Um, but when I'm on vacation, uh, I went to see my sister-in-law that lived in Hawaii a couple years ago, and our HR manager starts calling me with the time difference at 3.30 in the morning. Oh, no. uh, right, so we've got, uh, I would expect for us in Lincoln, um, as we continue to grow, we'll probably have 250 employees. And uh, just things don't shut off. We also hire a lot of vendors, so we constantly have things that are going on. It is attention that's required. It's really great to have uh, other team members that come in to manage more of the tasks, but uh, your commitment and your spouse's understanding, it is a lot easier to work a nine to five than to do the job that we do because you do not get a vacation and when you are not here, you still are responsible for the, the problems that has to get solved. It's very great when somebody else goes out to do that and assist you with it, but your mind is always on it. Um, and spouses can sometimes not understand that if they're not in a similar state with their work, right? If you're talking about something that, hey, here's what's going on with this vendor that's working for us, and they give us a suggestion, they think, well, this should just be so easy. You just tell them what to do. This is not how any of that ever goes. <laughs> you become a manager of many things. And uh, it's frustrating for that spouse because they may think, uh, you could be doing you could be more effective in what you're doing but when they are not the one that has to do any of that and then they haven't um, you know they're like why do you have to work so hard well, that's is truly what it takes so, so it can cause some problems so is your wife an entrepreneur she is now uh, <laughs> within the last year um, has become a partner in her firm oh that's wonderful so she's been many years a CPA um, but coming into that, and it's a little bit different too. Um, it's, it's great for us both to be able to do that. Um, but within a large firm, they have think, tasks broken out by all of the different partners. The responsibilities of different things works out great there. But when I hear everything that each is responsible for, and I understand those are the tasks that fall on my plate alone. Um, you know, mostly of the like business management side of what we do. So she's learning a lot about it, but doesn't quite get it, right? Because not everybody comes to her for their software management, for their compliance, uh, for hiring, all those other pieces. So it's been helpful. <laughs> I think for me, uh, committing to things and time has been an issue because I, in my world, things are fine until it's not. Mm -hmm. And then it doesn't really matter what I'm doing. I gotta go work on that until it's done and you don't really take breaks. And so that's been kind of, people don't understand it. 
you know, they don't see it, so it's hard to like get them on the same page. And then sort of as far as understanding entrepreneurship, uh, I have a brother and a dad that both start business and they ended up being really successful. And so there's like a, not necessarily competitiveness, <laughs> but like, I did this, why aren't you doing this sort of thing? So there's like sort of a, a need Maybe not like a direct need, but sort of a sort of a, a need to like be at their level, which is sort of kind of been interesting. But yeah, it's uh, it's it's just hard to explain to people that aren't used to what it actually takes. Because then, what may sound like not a big deal, that may be like the first contact with the client. So like you stop everything because you don't want to mess it up, and then they're like, "That's not a big deal. You can do it." And you're like, "No." no. <laughs> so yeah. All right, final question from me, and then we'll open it up to the audience. Favorite tool or best piece of advice that you have um, come across so far that has helped you as an entrepreneur or in your business? I think for me, I sort of alluded to this, I think sort of being a consultant and an expert in the thing, you kind of get tunnel vision sometimes, like this is what you need to do, and that doesn't really matter. It sort of matters, but not really. It's just making sure you just listen to what they actually want. And then even if it's not the best thing for them, just figure out how to make them happy. Exactly. That's probably the best advice. So listen to your customers. Yeah. Okay. Um, a tool that has helped us a lot is Gallup Strengths. So we hire a lot of people and within what we're what we do is try to fill gaps in strengths that we do not have and also focusing on mastery of our own strengths and as partners um, really did some good deep dives to understand ourselves better understand how we complement each other and how those compliments help us to grow so good advice and saying you know your overview of seeing two different personalities and saying here's what you can do to make this work really well um, that has been helpful because as we hire and grow our teams, it helps them to understand more about why they're with us and what they bring. We might be good at certain things, but uh, we need those gaps filled and that has helped us to know what are the things that we are not expert in. About three years ago, when Dustin was looking for a CRM for his business, he found HubSpot, which is a free um, software solution, CRM solution. And so I was helping him kind of get that um, off the ground. And then that's I ended up becoming a HubSpot Solutions partner um, to help that as part of my business. So I didn't know three years ago the CRM that I was helping select with him that I would start working with HubSpot to help other small businesses. So it's nice that you might hear that CRM management is really expensive. Um, difficult to use, but there are free solutions out there that can help you manage um, information better. And so I'd encourage anybody to do that. Yeah, like I said earlier, I think the the Clifton Strengths really kind of helped me to kind of define my message that I wanted to use for marketing, and, and also when I visit with people in networking situations. And then the Canvas business model made me kind of think outside of my traditional box, I guess, was of, of how to view running a business. And so I think those two tools probably have helped me uh, the most in the kind of, uh, in the real early stages, kind of growing, growing stages of this coaching business. So those kind of helped me uh, kind of focus a little more on, on my strengths and accentuate those. In my industry, what I do, there are really no specific tools like Gallup or Clifton or anything like that that we can use since it's just Josh and I to help us with real estate. <laughs> um, a lot of it is just studying, studying how the laws work, studying regulations, studying the market, um, and there's no program necessarily that will help you do that. You just have to get the information. Um, so the biggest tools, I guess, uh, for me personally has been um, the meetups, the networking events um, with like-minded individuals, whether that be uh, realtors, you know, um, investors, or entrepreneurs as a whole. Um, other people's words and success stories and fails, um, learning experiences um, really open up my mind to, okay, well, 
I don't have a program I can use to teach me this. Tell me what you did. And then I can incorporate that on what I do and make it my own. So um, yeah, like I said, we don't have, there's two people, he does one part, I do the other, and there's no combination of the two. Um, my, my kiddo sat me down when I left my, uh, my W-2 job. And my son, not an emotional child, I mean, he's an 18-year-old boy, um, goes, you know what, I've seen you go up, I've seen you go down, I've seen you cry, I've seen absolutely everything, but you can do it. Like, you can genuinely do it. He was like, if you can discipline me <laughs> the way you do and have me still follow a straight path, you can do it. And my daughter just looks at me and she's like, I just want you there. She's like, and if it means, you know, you're, you're out there, then it means that you're out there. She's like, I just, I just want you here. Um, I, was a, I was in corrections for a little over 10 years. Um, so I worked in the prisons. I worked with murderers and you know everything in between. Um, and it taught me that being able to effectively communicate my needs is what will continue to move me forward. If I don't know how to ask for help, <clears throat> I'm not gonna be able to receive help. So I guess it's not really a tool, but it's a tool, so. Anybody have questions or comments? I'm a, I'm a, <laughs> I'm a developer. Uh, it's being forced to learn marketing with sales. So your first sales, how, how do you go about the process? How do you do your very first sales? Well, think about senior care and what the responsibility uh, is when someone would call us to care for their parent. That's a lot there. So Carl and I would do a lot of our early sales um, calls together as we're trying to figure a lot of those things out and give someone the confidence that we can handle the responsibility that you're giving to us. Um, that person that we worked with that was our first client we were so dedicated to what we were doing became such an advocate and we um, it's good proof point of what we do how much it matters uh, because over several years some of the things that he said were I feel like I can be good at my job again because of everything that you've come in to help my family with so being really confident uh, and then after the fact trying to figure out how we make sure that we can accomplish the things that we're setting out to do and uh, service recovery and in instances where we need to but the sales process is hard and I think we were in business six months before we made a sale because we were focusing a lot on legal and other things you know building our own website a lot of advice that I'd go back to give us to try to get more experts to do other things but um, was it's a long process and we're still working on that I mean we need to make enough sales to generate uh, you know just at higher volumes now so we don't end up um, you know it's it's process that's continuing to ongo I guess I think for me you know you go to all these networks to try to meet people and do stuff and mine wasn't a client like I thought it was going to be first it was a class somebody asked me to, to go teach a class and so that gave confidence. And then as I was networking more, then you got more people. But it's, uh, I don't know, it's sort of the first one just kind of happened. <laughs> Even though you're doing stuff, it's not like you like targeted somebody, at least for me, I didn't target somebody and like get them. It was like, oh, I need this. Can you come help do this after networking? And I think that once you get one, then it kind of makes sense. And then you can get reviews and then it's easier after that. But yeah, I'm not sure there was some sort of magic that happened. It just kind of, I mean, you put in the work, but it just kind of happens. It's not, at least that's how it works for me. And I think for a lot of people, because you're just doing stuff and then you talk to the right person eventually and it goes from there. I think a thing you uh, that I didn't mention that you have to overcome is the, I mean, with that newness, to expand on that part of it, Carla is really well known in our industry and in senior care um, and know so many people but you have to build trust and have those proof points. So our first um, customers came from the internet and very few ever after that have come from it. 
but building up that trust in our market so people that knew us and I love going backwards to hear um, those conversations when we would do a lot of marketing meetings together and just introducing our company and our brand they're really hard on us to say make sure that you're coming into this and you know what you're doing and you're able to do a really good job and you're working in the scope and they just sat back and watched what happened before there's enough trust to start referring us. So that's an interesting thing even when you can have really close friends or um, people in your network, they may not be the people to give you your business first because they're going to sit back and see can you handle it in different industries, financial services, security, home care, certain things, you know, you just don't trust that to somebody that isn't proven and how do you prove that when you don't have any other prior customers. Mm -hmm. And I think sort of on that note, you know, especially when you're starting, you're trying to figure out how to charge for your time and what to do. But there's definitely a point where you can start building that trust by like giving away free knowledge. So then having those conversations, give a little bit of tidbits that you know are beneficial to them, don't sell them, just kind of talk to them, educate them. And then we I mean, don't spend your whole time doing this, but eventually they start knowing that you actually know it's free. I read an interesting book, I think it's Jeff Blunt or Blount, I can't remember. it's called Fanatical Prospecting. He said on the, your average customer, you have to touch seven times in a trusting way for them to be able to pull the trigger to hire you. So you think about that, it could be a networking event, then it could be having coffee with them. They may see something on your website or something that you share that, that brings them value. You still have four more times that you have to, <laughs> on average. Now, sometimes it'll go quicker, but I, that kind of changed my mindset that everything you do has to be long term. You might get some quick customers, and they, and they may disappear right away. But it's a, you have to build relationships and build trust, and it just takes time. Uh, I have two quick questions. Uh, I'll hold it quick. First of all, are how many of you or any of or are all of you first generation business owners? The second question is, uh, would you do anything different? I am not a first generation. Um, in any way, shape, or form. My grandfather, um, he had. You guys know leadership, um, leadership source, right? Okay. Leadership. Um, leadership source. Leadership resource. 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 Oh my God, I wasn't yeah, yeah. saying re. <laughs> uh, maybe a cup of coffee, it's fine. Um, that's what my grandfather did. Um, and he went around from business to business and helped implement that type of, you know, um, different procedures, policies, you know, ways of speaking, things like that. Um, and then my aunt followed in his footsteps and is now a professor, still doing the leadership on the side. Um, so it's kind of like I saw how successful they were and it wasn't so much the dollar sign behind it because there's sometimes it's not a big dollar sign um it was the the fact of the matter that they did it why can't i type of thing so yeah rick i'm first uh, what i would do different when i was growing my cleaning business and expanding is looking back i chased revenue too quickly and i chased growth too quickly i got greedy with it i ended up taking on too many projects with not enough help. Uh, I ended up getting in with uh, a property management company that was routinely 60 to 90 days late with me, that I had a feeling, you have that gut feeling, right? When you're meeting with someone and you're like, this person isn't very detail oriented or they're, they don't seem like they have their ducks in a row. But I was, I, I was so intent on growing and expanding and increasing that revenue that I, I didn't trust my instincts. So that's one thing that now with growing the coaching business, I'm much more intentional with my time, with with who I'm dealing with, that type of thing. Yeah, I, I would say most of my mom started her own business later on in life, and so I grew up with a um, very stable um, household of parents, and she had a successful business near retirement. She created her own consulting business, so I got to see um, from her with my dad helping her with the books and those kinds of things, too, so it's kind of neat to see that later on in life. Uh, neither Carla or I are first-generation business owners. Um, I, with my parents, my father had a construction company. I 
think all I saw all of the most difficult things that you could learn. I think it was a learning opportunity, not in success, but in what are the challenges that need to be overcome to run a business. Um, and I think what I would um, change is just give myself more credit, continue to build confidence as you scale and you continue to work on things and know more about yourself. Um, but in the last five years of my career before I um, became an entrepreneur, I think I was playing it pretty safe even though I was getting into a uh, high role and working with some big teams. But, um, but that would be a thing that uh, as we continue, I'm very excited for what we're going to be able to do because well, we, uh, the confidence of where we're at right now, right? We can handle tough things. We've ran a healthcare company through a pandemic. Uh, so giving us more credit early, but not taking those things for granted. I'm not a first generation. I think when I first started and still kind of in this mindset, I want to do primarily technology through AI opposed to hiring a bunch of stuff for it's easier, at least from a management standpoint, you know, potential higher revenue, net profit kind of stuff. But uh, I probably went too far that way. So the, the personal connection, and it depends on the age group too. So like the market research and identifying how it all kind of lines up, I probably should have spent a little bit more time on. In cybersecurity, it's really hard to research that stuff. But uh, yeah, the, the personal connection after I've been in there for a while, it is at a whole different level than I ever imagined. Because you have people that their whole livelihood's on the line because they're at risk of losing everything because they have some sort of ransomware or something. And it's like, it is ha has more to do with my psychology background than probably my tech background. And I totally underestimated that. Because it's, uh, yeah, the emotions or like exploitation of stuff it was, I had no idea how big a deal that stuff was. And so I would have done more to address that stuff. But yeah, I think overall, I, I don't know how much you could change in hindsight. It's so much easier, but at the time, you like kind of have to fail a little bit to like figure it out, unfortunately. But it's good because you get through it and hopefully you don't fail that hard, but uh, then you learn and come back stronger. So I think that that's kind of, Other questions? Comments? Um, if you had to describe your experiences so far in the focus suites with just one word, what would that would be? Oh. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, I'll probably take that easy. I think it's community. It's nice to have the people that, like, you don't know if you need something or if you just want to bank for a quick second or, like, you don't know how to do something, you can ask somebody. So I think, yeah, the community kind of sums it up. Uh, yeah, I would say relationships. Um, we do business with several um, alumni, and it's been great to, uh, you know, very thankful to Brooke, especially for making some connections to very great relationships that I have. Trying to be different. <laughs> <laughs> Creativity, the ability to just have my mind open to what else is out there and, and think of new things I never thought I would before. So just being in a creative space. Words, but <laughs> maybe maturing because I just started doing book club in January, just got in the office and all this, so it's still at the infant stages of <laughs> what I'm doing and what relationships with you guys. My the first word was community. Um, it, it's like a we're a little small village, you know, it's like we each play a different part to a huge success story. So community was, you stole it from me. I wanted to be the one to say it. You said it. Well, community is our middle name. Southeast Community College. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well played. How long have you been sitting on that one? <laughs> 10 years. Yeah. She's been waiting 15 years. Yeah. 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 I think sort of to expand that. At least in Lincoln, the entrepreneur community is really supportive of everybody. Mm -hmm. And once you sort of get dialed in and meet those people, you see the same people a lot. But it's uh, really supportive with everything. Yeah. 
Because you put the what you do aside, your specific job, you put that completely aside with the, the entrepreneur um, individuals that are, you know, they're here within the community and you, yeah, you allow yourself to become more educated by these individuals. So it has nothing to do with what you do. It has everything to do with how you do it and who you incorporate in that, so. One final question. I have a question for you. For me? Yes. Okay. So throughout the years, it's been quite a while, um, throughout the years, how, what has it done for you in your specific role seeing the growth, maturity, um, advancement of all these different new upcoming businesses? What has it done for you? Oh, Rhea, I said I was not going to cry. I was, oh, I was, I was just saying, I was like, Rhea asked the question, and Brooke said she wasn't going to cry, and... Didn't you cry last and, week, too? Yeah, I was going to cry this week. Um, for me, um, personally, it has given me confidence uh, to be able to um, witness and play even a small part in the development of all of you um, as entrepreneurs and as business owners, um, that has given me confidence. It's given me a lot of satisfaction. Um, and I think if I had to say it in one word, Ray, um, it's just been inspiring. It makes me see the world in a completely different way. The world feels really small in a good way like we can do whatever we want there it's limitless right and I have that mindset because of all of you and just so incredibly honored to get to be part of all of your journeys and I'm gonna stop yeah that. I was like <laughs> I'm gonna stop it. I feel it right here that's good that's good well, thank you so much to our panel. Thank you, all of you, for being here uh, this week. Next week will be our final um, celebration as we wrap up the month on Tuesday night. We are going to have an open social hour, or it's from 5 to 7.30 at Lila Mae's uh, restaurant on um, 33rd and South-ish. Uh, co-owned by one of our alumni members, Travis Russell. So we'll be there, there'll be appetizers and just open networking. Next Thursday will be our final Perk Up Thursday of the year. We break, um, well, we'll have Thanksgiving the week after that, and then um, we usually break uh, during December. So it'll be our, our, last, our last Perk Up of the year, and we'll have a panel of all of the original uh, members who were involved in researching and uh, launching the Entrepreneurship Center at Focus Weeks. So we invite you all back to those events. Um, Ray passed around a sign-in sheet. If you had not had an opportunity to sign in yet, please do that for us and uh, have a great weekend. <laughs> Yeah. Oh. Thank you, everybody. Um,